On today's Olympic Hockey Daily, presented by Locked On NHL, we preview the women's medal games and see who made it to the men's quarterfinals. You're Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to this Olympic hockey edition of Locked On NHL. I'm Rachel Donner from Locked On Flyers. I'm on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here as always with Ann Kimmel of Locked On Predators. Where can people find you, Ann? You can find me on, on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. And we are in what feels like the beginning of the home stretch. I know it seemed it seemed like a long time, but now all of a sudden things are wrapping up, and I think, okay, wait a minute, where did some of this tournament go? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, we're already about to hand out some medals, and the men's are in the quarterfinals. We're going to talk all about it on today's show. Thanks for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms, and you can watch us over on YouTube. All right, so on the women's side of things, we've got the two big medal matchups. And honestly, I'm not sure which one I'm looking forward to most. Where are you right now? No, I feel the exact same way. Of course, everybody, I think, is excited to see another USA-Canada gold medal match. But I am just as excited for this bronze medal match between Switzerland and Finland. I think it has the potential to be a really great competition. Yeah, let's talk about that one first, just because I think the matchup is so close. Mm -hmm. And you look at their paths to get to this bronze medal match, very similar. Both of these teams started out with three losses in the preliminary games, winning their last one. And interestingly for Switzerland, they won that last prelim against Finland, mm -hmm. three to two. So that's kind of the history there. Uh, Laura Stalder, of course, one of the standouts for Switzerland, scoring that game winning goal in that one. And I just feel like both of these teams are peaking at the right time. I would agree. I think they've taken a very similar trajectory. I think that each team kind of struggled to find their game as they started the tournament, but they just keep getting better and better. And even though maybe some of their results don't show it, I think if you watch their performance, you see these are two teams that are improving every time they play. And I think that's what's going to make this bronze medal match so good. I think they're peaking at the right time. And I think this game really could go either way. They're very even from a statistical standpoint standpoint as well. Um, you know, Finland is a little bit better on the power play. Uh, they're second overall in the power play, but both teams are very close on the penalty kill. Finland's just got a little bit of an edge there, but really for the most part, they're two teams very evenly matched from a statistical standpoint. Yeah, I think, you know, the main difference here is that Finland has a little bit more depth in terms of mm -hmm. their scoring so far in this tournament. And I think that's something that'll be a big key to the game for them. Whereas, you know, you talk about Switzerland and it's Alina Mueller and Lara Stalder. So, yes. You know, I think, you know, for Switzerland, I think to get an additional edge against Finland, who I, I honestly think Finland's going to take this one, but it's going to be close. Mm -hmm. I think like a player like Phoebe Stans needs to step up a little bit. You know, she's had some really good chances, but hasn't been able to capitalize as much as the other two. And I think that that would really go a long way, especially because Switzerland will likely, I think, be depending on their goaltender, Andrea Brandley, who, you know, had a rough go of it the last time around, but I yes. think she is their, their goaltender for the fi final or, or for this bronze medal game. Don't get me wrong, but I, I do think that additional forwards are going to have to step up and get some points for Switzerland. No, I would agree with that. And, you know, I hated to see Brandley have such a struggle in the last game because I feel like she's had a pretty good tournament for the most part. So it'll be interesting to see how she bounces back 
from that in this bronze medal match. I think she can be very strong in net in the right situations, but mm-hmm. she is going to need some offensive support too to give her a little, a little bit of defensive breathing room yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, For she sure. has she has faced 50 more shots overall than Kesela from Finland, mm-hmm. which is just extraordinary. Same number of games played. So yes. um, the fact that their save percentages are pretty close to each other, although Kesela has as an edge is about 90, uh, 91% save percentage. I, I just think that you're right. This is where, you know, the rest of the team for Mm -hmm. Switzerland is going to have to step up. And I, you know, I think conversely on the Finland side of things, you know, they're going to have to depend on the players who have produced so far to keep doing that. So Tapani, Niemannen, Karvainen, I I think all three of them are going to have to really take control of this game from a, a scoring perspective. No, I would agree with you. I think they're going to have to step up. They're going to have to take the lead on that. I think Jenny Hirokoski is going to be a strong defensive presence for Finland, and they're going to need that because Mm -hmm. if Switzerland can get a couple more people going, this could be a a strong offensive showing for Switzerland. But like you said, they're going to need an extra one or two players to find the back of the net for that team, I think. Um, What do you think are some keys for Switzerland? Yeah, like I said, you know, they're going to have to get good goaltending from Branley. And I think that, you know, these depth forwards are going to have to step up a little bit as well. And I I just think that they're going to have to really drive Finland to the outside and not allow them to get additional shots on goal. Because when Finland does that, they're usually pretty good quality shots. Yeah. For sure. And of course, that's not the only medal match we have coming up. We've got the match that everybody has talked about, even Mm -hmm. from before the tournament, USA versus Canada. Where do you feel this one is going to land? What's your outlook going into this? You know, I keep going back and forth because Canada has just been absolutely dominant in this Mm -hmm. tournament. And they're so good on the rush. They're so good on the attack. You know, they they are really good on, with their power kill. So they create a lot of app- opportunities while they're on the PK. So like we've mm-hmm. been talking about this whole time, you know, they take a ton of penalties, but they don't care because they're so good at, <laughs> they don't have at, to. The, <laughs> at the PK. But I mean, you look at that and that's averaging about 10 minutes a game being shorthanded and against a team that's anything but the U S they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I do think, you know, while the U S has struggled on the power play this tournament, I think they're on the right trajectory. And that last game against Finland, I think they improved on their power play performance with more creativity on it. And I think that they improved as far as their shot choices and creating opportunities in general. So I do think there's a window in there for Mm -hmm. Team USA. I just don't know that it's open wide enough. (laughs) (laughs) I think that is such a great summary of this situation. Canada, of course, won in the preliminaries four to two. Um, And I think we can take away some things like you said, I think Canada has no problem taking penalties. They are very, they're okay playing a little bit more aggressive, even if it lands them in the penalty box, because their penalty kill is so strong. And like you said, you know, United States is improving on their power play. I wish that maybe there was a different Canadian weakness for the United States to capitalize on besides special teams, because that hasn't been a strength. But I think there is potential for the United States to keep this a really great game. Um, One of the things I've noticed about this team through the entire tournament is that fourth line uh, for the United States has really been a statement line. They have been very productive um, and they're a line that, that I feel like you can count on to generate, you know, good chances, finding the back of the net. You have Haley Skimura and Jesse Comfer have both really had strong tournaments. So I think that there are places where Team USA may have an advantage. And I think that fourth line is one of those places that might give them an edge. And that's where I think uh, one of the big question marks comes in for Team USA is that, you know, they have had this history of shortening the bench. 
when push comes to shove on this team. Mm -hmm. We've seen it, you know, we've talked about it on the D side of things with them, you know, only really playing 5D. And then on the forward side of things, I worry that as the game progresses, they're going to continue to do that and shut out players that have produced for them. You know, like you just mentioned, Skamura and Jesse Comfer have combined for four goals and three assists in the tournament. And that's, that's, you know, incredible for a fourth line. So what I think also needs to happen is that they really need to figure out that balance. And, you know, that second line with Alex Carpenter and Amanda Kessel, they're some of the most creative players in the women's game. And they have to be able to use that and maybe get some additional chances get secondary chances. I think that's Mm -hmm. the big thing is that Canada is so good at preventing secondary chances, especially because Anne Renee Debienne's in net and she's not going to give a ton of them up. But Team USA, and I think that line in particular has to be the line that can do some of that. You know, obviously Hillary Knight can do that as well Mm -hmm. on that top line. But I think, you know, getting second chances And preventing second chances at the other end of the ice is going to be a huge key to this game. Yep. And we talked uh, just briefly there about Canadian goaltending, but um, uh, United States goaltending. Maddie Rooney was in net for the preliminary round, but that doesn't necessarily look like the trend for Team USA. It looks like Alex Cavallini is going to get the start in net. How do you feel like the goaltending is going to pan out in this gold medal match? You know, we talked in our recap of the uh, game that Team USA played against Finland with Cavallini. I mean, she faced some really challenging shots and the volume of shots she faced was much higher than Mm -hmm. in any of the previous games for Team USA other than the game against Canada. And so I think, you know, where Rooney played. So Mm -hmm. I think that she's tuned up and it seems like they're going with Cavallini and it feels like you know she's ready to go for this because she's played the last two games she's in her zone and like I said she played really well against a a tough opponent in Finland so I think that kind of sets her up for success in this game now you know you say that and then you look at Canada's lineup (laughs) and you're like well (laughs) maybe you know again I you know for team Canada all they have to do is play their game if they play Mm -hmm. their game to a tee the goals will come and they'll win this thing no problem. And, you know, again, rooting interest aside, I can't argue with that. I mean, they're good. They're the best. They're they probably should so win. Good. So good. Yes. I, you so can't good. complain. <laughs> they are. It's going to be a great, uh, I think it's going to be a great medal round all the way around gold medal between USA and Canada. We have the bronze medal match between Switzerland and Finland. It's going to be some fantastic uh, ending to the women's hockey tournament. We do, of course, still have the men's tournament going on. We've got some results that we want to talk about here coming up. But first, want to let you know that our friends at Bet Online want you to know that football may be over for the season, but basketball is in full steam ahead for both pro and college hoops from all the latest odds totals player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land betonline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs bet online remains the best spot for all of your sports scores your podcasts and news this season and of course it's not just basketball betonline.net is your source for all things hockey they have boxing and ufc odds and they have olympic coverage and information available as well Head to their website today or use your mobile device and learn more about the trends and action. Bet online where the game starts. Once again, thanks for making Locked On NHL your first listen every day. We are free and available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms. Well, we got a whole slew of games on the men's side of the tournament to talk about. We had the playoff round, which sets teams up to get into that quarterfinal matchup. And I got to say, there were some fun games here, too, yes. as well. And I don't know, which which was your favorite of the playoff games? I um, was really excited to watch Slovakia, Germany. I was amazed at how dominant I felt like the Slovakian team Mm -hmm. was in this matchup. 
Um, and I think you probably have a vested interest in Slovakia doing well with former Flyer head coach Craig Ramsey I mean, coaching. I don't know that he was the greatest coach for the Flyers. <laughs> but maybe but... this is a nice second jar, another gig. No, good to good to see him having some success. Yeah, but um, Slovakia won that one for nothing, and it really was a very dominant performance against uh, the German team that didn't maybe play as well as we've seen them play. Uh, in earlier time, earlier games of the tournament, Slovakia was dominant on shots. They had 34 shots to Germany's 21. Patrick Rebar has the top save percentage in the tournament so far. Mm-hmm. He's got 55 saves on 57 shots overall, which just is incredible. Um, so really a great game. I thought it was very interesting. The winner of this one is going to be facing Team USA. So USA is going to have their hands full with a Slovakia team that really had a great performance. Yeah, it was it was interesting because we've been talking so much about uh, Yaroslav Kovsky, the draft eligible prospect, and he did not score in this game. Mm-hmm. For Slovakia, they got some depth scoring and, you know, the the second most points on their team is ranking 22nd overall in scoring. That's uh, Solaric for mm-hmm. Slovakia. And so it just goes to show you that, you know, sometimes you do need these other guys to step up and it worked yeah. out for them. I think the other thing about that game was that Slovakia really used their speed and the normal German physicality wasn't quite there it was interesting because there was a post game comment by um, one of the German defensemen and that they just found it, I think, really difficult to adjust to the smaller ice that they're just so used yes. to playing on that European ice that they couldn't really get that North South style of hockey down where Slovakia just, it fits right in mm-hmm. with their speed um, to have a North South kind of game. So I think that's what kind of led to the shutout for them. Yeah. Now, what game stood out to you in these playoff round or play in round? Um, I think the there's two things. The story of Team Denmark is mm-hmm. phenomenal. Um, you know, they are are just brand new to this scene. The best that Denmark has ever done at a world championship is eighth place. And that was in 2016 was the last time they did it. And they held their own versus Latvia. Now, Latvia has struggled this tournament. Yes. Don't get me wrong. You know, they they left the tournament without any wins. Mm-hmm. And so I understand it's been a struggle. But this game, you know, was pretty even. And Latvia was up two to one after the second period. Um, Marcus Lauritsen got the goal, go-ahead goal on the power play in the third. And then just like Latvia wasn't able to get back in it. So I feel bad for them. Their captain, uh, Laura Starzins, uh, who got both goals for Latvia in this game, mm-hmm. he announced his retirement after the oh, game. Wow. So yeah. like, what, what a note to go out on. I just, <laughs> But also, you know, he's in his upper 30s. Like what a tremendous career for him. Yeah. And you know what, if you're going to play in a last tournament, the Olympics is not bad. You know, Latvia, like you said, didn't get any wins in this tournament, but I do feel like they had periods of some really good play in a couple of their games. So, you know, there are some good things that that team can build on, but I agree with you. I think Denmark is going to be a really fun story to watch. You know, they're building a little bit of momentum for themselves. Mm -hmm. They are going to be facing a pretty tough Russia team in the next round. So we'll see how that one pans out, but I think it's exciting that they got as far as they did. And I think that, you know, they're a fun, they're a fun little team to watch. Yeah. And I think the other fun team to watch for me was the team from China. And, you know, they lost seven to two in this playoff game, but it Mm -hmm. certainly didn't feel like that. And you could see that China just put absolutely everything Mm -hmm. into this game. And there was just a, a few stretches where things fell apart for two or three minutes at a time. And Canada got, you know, a couple of goals in each of those periods. So that's going to add up eventually. But China really kept it competitive. It was two to one at -hmm. at the end of the first period. And it was just so unfortunate because Jeremy Smith was injured. It wasn't anything, you know, he didn't get knocked into. It was just like he just moved wrong and hurt his knee, it looked like. And, you know, he played so well, 15 saves on 17 shots in that period. And 
um, I just really felt like, you know, Brandon Yip was all over the place. Spencer Wu was all over the place. And these guys were just, like I said, putting absolutely everything into it. Paris O'Brien stepped up in net for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. And um, just the emotion you could see at the end of that game for China. You know, you see a couple of guys crying and you just think about, you know, this is their home ice and they've been working so hard putting together this program through Kunlun Red Star and just that this was the end of the culmination of all of that work you could just see that out there yeah this game I feel like was one that where the score wasn't necessarily reflective of the pace of the game all the way through I agree with you there were just times where Canada really quick could could capitalize on some mistakes uh, so it was a it was a better game than probably the score sounds, and I agree with you. You could tell that that the Chinese players were really heartbroken to be exiting the tournament at this point. Um, Canada up next are going to be facing a really tough Swedish team, mm-hmm. so I think that is a game I'm very excited to watch. The, this is going to be kind of a, a clash of some titans. And uh, it'd be interesting to see how that one plays out. I thought Canada had a strong game, but I think that there are definitely some opportunities for Sweden against this Canadian team. 100%. That is definitely going to be the game to watch. Mm -hmm. And then the last quarter final uh, up against Finland will be Switzerland, who defeated Czechia four to Mm -hmm. two and that flips the result from the preliminary game where Czechia won two to one it was the first win of the tournament for Switzerland so what a way to get that first win yeah perfectly timed for sure unfortunately kind of the key to the game came when uh, in the second period Czechia had a tripping call and there was a power play goal for Switzerland that kind of gave them the 3-1 lead in the second period and it was just something that despite you know pulling their goalie a little bit early and getting a you know an, a goal with a man advantage you know Czechia just couldn't get enough momentum to get back into the game um, so say goodbye to David Krejcik out of the tournament with Czechia. Um, which I'm is a so bummed bit, about that. <laughs> it is a little bit sad, for and sure. And I say that, I I do not like the Boston Bruins. I will say that. <laughs> I will say that on this show, and I will say it proudly. Mm-hmm. But David Krejci, he's, he's a fun player to watch. Uh, yeah. you, you cannot deny that. Yeah. So he and the team from Czechia are out of the tournament. Now Switzerland is going to be facing off. Funny, I feel like we've talked about this. They're going to be facing off against Finland on the men's right. side as well. <laughs> so we've been here before, but different. Um, so I think that is going to be another uh, good game as well. Finland versus Switzerland on the men's side. Yes. And I know it feels like those two countries are are destined to They're, play. Yeah, they are. They are for sure. All right. Well, yeah, those quarterfinals are going to be really entertaining and they're kind of overlapping a little bit overnight for us here on the East Coast of North America uh, over over the next day. So there's going to be a lot of hockey. We have those four games as well as the bronze medal match coming up. And we are going to talk about all of that on tomorrow's show along with welcoming Stephen Ellis from the Hockey News who's going to give us his thoughts on the tournament thus far on both sides the women's and the men's and we're going to talk a little bit about those drawings he does because (laughs) I I kind of love them so we're really really looking forward to doing that and uh, that'll do it for today's show thanks for listening and have a great day